tackling the big one. Kind of the elephant in the room for the entire planet. I got plenty of thoughts about this, but let's see what, why Islam, let's see what, why Islam has to say. Mm. All right. What does Islam say about terrorism? In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. And then they start with a surah that's uh, truncated at the top. It's got an ellipsis, so it's the latter half of the surah, the useful half. Christians do that with the Bible all the time. If anyone slew a person, unless it be for murder or spreading mischief in the land, it would be as if he slew the whole people. To who? God? And if anyone saved a life, it would be as if he saved the life of the whole people. And that's Surah 5, verse 32. Two. All right, let's talk about that for just a second. Um, well, I've never killed anyone, and I've never saved a life, but I have tried to save a life, which sucks. <laughs> you know, very upsetting. I worked uh, at a hotel, and a guy, Japanese tourist, the English speaker of the group, had a fatal heart attack in his room. His roommate ran out of the room to get his friends to help, and the door locked behind him, and he didn't have a key. And they couldn't get into the room, and they didn't speak English. The dead guy did. So I get sent up to the room. Nobody knew what was going on. And, uh, you know, and I, once I realized what was going on, we took this guy off the bed, put him on the floor and started doing CPR and mouth to mouth. And I was taking turns with one of his buddies while we waited for the paramedics. And then they came and shocked the guy a whole bunch of times. And then, no, it was really upsetting. I had to, uh, I had to go through the guy's possessions with a guy from the coroner's department and they had to catalog it. And I was there. I worked three hours of overtime. It was a graveyard shift. It was my Friday. It so blasted my brain. You know, the depression and the disappointment and the, just trying to process it. That I got home in the morning after all that. I went to sleep. And next thing I know, my roommate's pounding at my door telling me, you slept the entire week and you got to go to work in a little bit. So, yeah. So, it's catastrophic. But, I don't feel that I failed to save everybody in Japan. So, I, you know, maybe I'm being a little persnickety, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, I get it. It's poetic speak, you know. You know, when a man this, he kills the whole world. I heard that, yeah. It's wonderful hyperbole. Um, I think it's flawed, but it's a nice sentiment. All right, anyway. One of the distinctive characteristics of the times we live in is the overwhelming presence of violence in our societies. Just now, huh? Uh, you know, I agree it sucks there's so much violence going on, but Read a little history and you'll find out that's been an ongoing problem. It's a human thing. Actually, it's a mammal thing, probably. Uh, whether it is a bomb going off in a marketplace or the hijacking of an aircraft where innocent people are held at ransom to achieve political ends, we live in an age where the manipulation and loss of innocent lives has become commonplace. 
I don't think we're quite there yet. I mean, I, being a American Yankee, I haven't had a mass shooting happen or a terrorist thing happen. Um, I mean, the hotel I worked at had a bomb threat or two once in a while. Um, I remember the Munich Olympics. I was a kid. I think that's the first time I really became aware <clears throat> aware of it. But then it was the IRA, you know, and the Catholics versus the Protestants. So that's the only thing, the only common denominator I know about religion is that it comes from fanaticism, which comes from um, a toxic uh, interpretation of religious ideas. They even got Buddhists that have pulled that kind of crazy, evil shit. Or they just pour gas and set themselves on fire. I mean, but I mean, you, it takes a fanatic. To, but unfortunately, you got to be a true believer to be a fanatic. That's supposed to be a good thing. Uh, I think people aren't asking enough questions about what they read. And therefore, they can take someone else's interpretation. And they'll find out there's a dozen more they could have taken. Just saying. All right. Commonplace. Eh. It's bad, but it's always been bad. We just have greater toys, you know, technology that we can use to cause mischief is greatly increased. <sighs> Such is the all-pervasive nature of indiscriminate violence that terrorism, for some reason with quotation marks, uh, is considered as one of the prime threats to peace and security in our societies. <clears throat> the word terrorism came into wide usage only a few decades ago. Uh, that's not really true. Of course, this is dated. I keep forgetting this is probably in the early 2000s. So, yeah, all right. Then maybe the math works, I guess. But, I mean, I remember it used to the, the IRA and, you know, and we had Timothy McVeigh was a terrorist. A Christian white terrorist, so I said strong, strong feelings lead to people reacting strongly about stuff that I don't know. I think I'd rather take a tepid believer. They tend to be less violent. One of the unfortunate results of this new terminology, oh boy is that it limits the definition of terrorism to that perpetuated by small groups or individuals. So now we're going to talk about whole countries and their militaries and their politicians, aren't we? Oh, brother. I guess an argument can be made for it, but does that help? Terrorism, in fact, spans the entire world. And manifests itself in various forms. I agree. Its perpetrators do not fit any stereotype. Yeah, except there's usually a fanatical feeling or belief about something. It doesn't even always have to be political. I guess it could be political. I mean, you know, religious could be political. It could be whatever. You know, people, I remember hearing about the football fans in England, you know, where you're going down to the subways and going, uh-oh, there's a fans of the other team. Get your brass knuckles and your knives. and Because you're fans of a sport? Like I said, strong feelings. Lots of endorphins exploding in the head. People acting rashly. Those who hold human life, lives cheap and have the power to expand, expend human lives appear at 
different levels in our society. Yeah, and there's a lot of them down through the ages. I mean, I remember hearing about the, the, the assassin guilds and the old man in the mountain and the, the, the hash that they would like, uh, make them smoke. And tell them they'd get all high on paradise and here's your dagger. Get right next to the caliph and plunge your dagger in. You're going to be killed horribly. Maybe immediately, maybe a little later. But you're going to heaven. And that hash feeling, that's just a taste of heaven. Yeah. Or, you know, a uh, military. You so love your country that you're going to be a kamikaze pilot. Or to strap a bomb vest on and get on a bus or something. Yeah, this shit is always happening. We're just getting more sophisticated about it in our technology and our weaponry and the toys of violence. But only their same old that old time religion sure ain't good enough for me. All right. The frustrated employee who kills his colleagues in cold blood or the oppressed citizen of an occupied land who vents his anger by blowing up a school bus are terrorists who provoke our anger and revulsion. It is. It's revolting. I think most people agree. Whatever your point of view, you probably agree. Especially when it's happening to somebody you think it should not happen to. Yeah, it's really revolting. Ironically, however, the politician who uses age-old ethnic animosities between people to consolidate his position, the head of state who orders carpet bombing, their, their quotation marks, not mine, um, of entire cities, the exalted councils that shook millions of civilians to death by wielding the insidious weapon of sanctions, yeah, I knew they were going there, are rarely published for their crimes against humanity. Yeah, or the asshole Ayatollah that sticks a fat twat on uh, Salman Rushdie, and he ends up finally losing an eye and living in hiding and all that. Because he wrote a book that I couldn't even get through. I would have never even tried to read it if they hadn't made such a kerfuffle about it. Yeah, Ayatollah was fucked up and wrong about it. And it's really fucked up when you there's Cat Stevens suddenly going, well, why well, I don't condone violence? It is, you know, it's, it's part of the faith. The guy technically should die. Write a song about that, biatch. It is this narrow definition of terrorism that implicates only individuals and groups that has caused Muslims to be associated with acts of destruction and terror in our popular media. Yeah, it's too bad some individuals took it upon themselves and, you know, decided to make a statement for the, you know, Black September guys, you know, make a statement for Palestine by killing a bunch of athletes and then hijack a plane so this so those other terrorists can be released or traded. Look, you know, I'm 63. I've been paying attention to this shit and it it there's no end to it. It might be getting a little worse, but it's always fanatics behind it. Fanaticism is the enemy. I mean, unfortunately, you know, religion tells you to tur turn your brain off and just believe. You know, every once in a while you'll find a verse that says, oh, yeah, you should really think, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, because you can always find something somewhere that you can twist and use, especially when you're plucking them out of context. All right. 
yeah, it is fucked up that they associate Muslims with terrorism. And I, I don't deny that I have not been, that I have been unaware of that because, uh, I mean, I have been aware of that. You know, there are times, I mean, even in movies, I saw a movie called, uh, Wanted Dead or Alive with Roger Hauer. And I was entertained by the movie. And it was violent and death and killing. And it was an 80s movie about terrorism. But then later on, I thought about it and went, every Muslim in that movie was an evil terrorist that was fake and couldn't be trusted and had no honor. And that's, that's not my experience. So... I was entertained by that movie because it was, you know, cowboys versus Indians. But then if you look at something objectively, you kind of go, well, wait a minute. Native Americans can might, they had some, you know, <laughs> yeah, nothing's just black and white. And, you know, the Christians are surprisingly quiet when it's a Timothy McVeigh, you know, if, when it's Christian terrorists. But they go on about Islam because they probably don't know any Muslims. You know, I've known plenty. And, uh, you know, yeah, they got to pray more every day and stuff, I guess. But, I mean, I met a lot that were pretty level-headed, intelligent, funny, kind. So, yeah. Same with Christians. I've met quite a few of those, too, that were decent. But I... You just got to watch out for the fanatics. Often, the religion of Islam is held responsible for the acts of a fringe minority among Muslims. Yeah, well, part of the problem is these Bible and this book and a lot of other holy books, but particularly these ones, can be dissected and plucked apart and use out of context and <laughs> pardon me that was in context but um and you could have a pro or con view about any subject if you go cherry picking you really can even if it doesn't really say what it seems to say out of context it works for some people and they're fine with that Could it be possible that Islam, whose light ended the dark ages in Europe, that was so kind of them to volunteer to do that, <laughs> now propound the advent of an age of terror? That's fucked up. But you know what? Everything fluctuates, waxes and wanes, teeter totters. Just, just, they never, no equilibrium ever. It's one extreme or another. And besides, where's that all that light that Islam brought to Europe? It wasn't the Quran. But there were some interesting writings, some by Muslims, some by people that were reading the Greek, Greek philosophers and the Romans and retranslating things and then... And then the Crusaders came along, and they got their hands on all that. But then again, the Muslims might have come in earlier and taken over a place, and they're going through the monastery going, hey, some of this paperwork's interesting. Yeah. Thank you for bringing light to the Dark Ages, Islam. I don't think they did it on purpose, but thank you for algebra and Arabic numerals, and the zero. Thanks for nothing. Could a faith that has over 1.2 billion followers the world over and over 7 million in America actually advocate the killing and maiming of innocent people? No, but some, and that's the problem. But the same with Christians. <laughs> that's what's so, that's why I'm unconvinced that there's any reality that these religions is, um, 
for that very reason. <sighs> Could Islam, whose name itself stands for peace, in, in uh, quotations, and submission to God, in quotations, yeah, it's that whole submission shit that I'm not into. This never was the submissive type. I'm kind of, you know, kind of a regular guy. Submission to God. Encourage its adherents to work for death and destruction. Well, it would make no sense. It would be, uh, it wouldn't be of any service to society. So I would imagine no, but funny that you could read the same book and and find ammunition that you can use. That's the problem. For too long, we have relied on stereotypical images in the new media and in Hollywood films for answers to those pertinent questions. It is time now to look at the sources of Islam and its history to determine whether Islam does indeed advocate violence. And then they're going to, uh-huh. Now they're breaking it into some sections next. And we'll do that in another video. All right. Well, that was predictable, but still interesting. Uh, I don't think that helps them, you know, start making it about world well, countries that do sanctions. Gee, who's doing that? You know, you can do sanctions, you know. People can sanction us. It happens. I mean, that's terrorism, though. I don't know. I... It's too bad. The little people always get hurt, don't they? I know I'm one of them. All right. Stay tuned, and we're going to find out more about what does Islam say about terrorism. And hopefully it'll get more interesting and actually make help me to understand better. Stay tuned.